All right, we'll get our caucus started tonight. Um, Councilman Gollin can't be here tonight, so I'll be running the meeting. Um, tonight we have Leslie Collins from Scranton tomorrow. So Leslie, the floor is all yours. There we go. Hello. Hi, Leslie. Um, hi, how are you? Good. Good. Uh, well, as usual, thank you for allowing me to come tonight to um, provide our quarterly report on um, Scranton Tomorrow's downtown economic initiatives. Um, as the business continues to evolve during um, the COVID crisis, um, we continue to forge ahead and we are doing our very best to respond to the needs of the business uh, district, the property owners, and the small business community collectively. Um, we're continuing to lead the, ex uh, the existing economic development projects that um, we have on the books, and yet we're creating a host of new activities and initiatives, um, you know, offering um, the businesses a lot of options while we're all trying to navigate this new um, you know, way of doing business. Um, tonight, I thought I would touch upon five um, focus areas. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about our organizational structure, um, our community partnerships, economic development projects that um, we have talked about in the past, give you an update as to where they're going, um, some new business development initiatives that we're working on, and um, of course, um, our safe, clean, green ambassador program and our design committee accomplishments. So um, I'll start with uh, the organizational structure. Um, organizationally, our board president, um, I'm sure you all know Joshua Mast, um, he has ended his second year term as our board president. And Josh has been a really great dedicated board member for um, I'm going to probably say at least a decade with Scranton tomorrow. So I did publicly want to thank Josh for all that he has done, um, not only for Scranton tomorrow as a board member, but purely as a member of the community at large. He is always dedicated to um, helping others. And they show that not only through their personal life, but also through their business. Um, so many thanks to, to Josh for all that he has done. Uh, our succession plan, however, has welcomed Michael Gilmartin um, to um, lead the organization as our current board president. Michael, as well, has a, an outstanding um, history of dedication for Scranton Tomorrow, as well as um, serving on numerous community boards and really is an amazing um, community volunteer. So he remains engaged in other organiz with or other organizations as well, but we are thrilled to have Michael step up to um, serve his two year term as our board president. Our succession plan also um, has a formula for um, incoming presidents. So currently our first and second vice presidents are Tim Maloney, um, a local attorney and Tammy Jackson um, from NBT Bank. So we're very excited about our succession plan and, and I did want to thank them all, um, especially during these tough times when everyone is trying to focus on, you know, survival of their own business. They all have continued to step up to the plate to serve the community. So I did want to thank them for that. The second area um, I wanted to talk about were um, partnerships. And um, I have said, I know many times in the past that Scranton Tomorrow's success um, is a lot about the partnerships that we have built for nearly 30 years. So um, partnerships continue to play a vital role in, in fulfilling our mission at Scranton Tomorrow. And this year, um, I would say they're more important than ever. So I know that Last time, uh, last quarter, I reported um, two charitable projects that we launched. And I just wanted to quickly review those because I think that they are very significant for um, kickstarting our local economy within in our community and really helping to address 
the needs of the general public. Um, our first project that we embarked on um, immediately upon the, the pandemic was a partnership with the University of Scranton and uh, Friends of the Poor, which was the Electric City Connection Project. Um, in tandem, we coordinated with the Meals for Medics program, which it was a partnership with uh, Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine. Collectively, those two projects through Scranton Tomorrow raised over $50,000. Um, and that was all to support the needs of the community. And in various ways, which I think is important, um, we provided over 3,000 meals addressing food insecurity within our own community. We delivered 670 individually wrapped meals to the third shift workers with, within our own healthcare system. And we injected over $50,000 into our restaurant community. And that is important, like I said, on a number of, of um, levels because it really has tapped into various aspects within our own community. Those dollars um, helped kickstart the, restu the restaurant community, quite frankly, and every dollar that came in went right out. Um, so we think that that, that partnership is the only reason that that happened. Um, and once again, we want to thank not only the partners involved, but we want to thank the community as a whole because the community stepped up to the plate. And that I think says so much about the city of Scranton and our neighboring communities. Um, most recently, we engaged in a partnership with uh, the city of Scranton and Lackawanna College's culinary school. And this was a project brought to us by um, Lackawanna. And um, the objective is to have local chefs come and work with the culinary students. Lackawanna College provided all of the food. They provide the um, front and back staff. So the students are actually learning from a local chef how to cook their favorite meals. And then they're also providing the services as the wait staff. Um, so they're doing the front and the back end of the business. The important piece of this, and, and um, we're, we're very thankful that Lackawanna College and the city were, were partners for this project. Um, Lackawanna College's facility is 409 on Adams. And every Tuesday and Wednesday night, you can go and support your favorite local restaurants. And every dollar that is raised at this event every week goes right into the back into the local community to the restaurant that is providing the meal that night. There are no expenses for the restaurant. Um, and we have um, a jam packed schedule from September all the way through November. So there is a great opportunity for you also to socially distance uh, the university, uh, Lackawanna College, I'm sorry, has provided their outdoor courtyard. They have tented it. They provide tables and chairs and heaters, and it's just a really great evening out. So I would ask that, that um, if you could help remind at your weekly meetings, um, the community that this project is out there and it's really um, just a great experience for everyone. Um, also wanted to talk about a project called Boost Business NEPA. And Scranton Tomorrow is really excited about serving on their leadership team. And this is a group of um, business leaders that have come together. A wide variety of professional services are being offered pro bono, and they are helping to support locally owned businesses that need assistance for sustainability. And this is a project um, that has been in the works for a number of months, but recently kicked off and just wanted to let you know that it is out there and Scranton Tomorrow will have information on our website um, that will uh, guide you to the Boost Business NEPA website if you do need assistance. Or if you are a business professional and would like to provide services to the community, this is a great way to get involved. As far as economic development projects um, that have been on the books, I know we've talked about them probably for about a year, <laughs> but just wanted to let you know that they are moving. Um, I'm happy to report that the Pocket Park project on the corner of Wyoming and Linden is moving forward. Um, we did certainly have some delays during COVID um, and uh, we are very thankful that all the partners pulled together and really 
put a big push to make sure that this continues to move even with the business climate. So just as a refresher, um, I always make sure to comment that this is really a great public-private partnership. It is um, a partnership not only between the city, the county, Scranton tomorrow, um, but also the Department of uh, Pennsylvania Department of Economic and Community Development and many others have stepped up to the plate to help move this forward. Uh, the city owned the lot. Scranton Tomorrow is the holder of the $400,000 grant for the design and construction of the site. And the county has worked diligently in moving forward with the remediation process and had awarded the contract to AMO. Uh, cool. AMO um, did a great job of putting together the remediation plan and working with DEP. So I'm proud to announce that within the last two weeks, we have received the formal approval from DEP and the remediation process can move forward. So the county is currently working with AMO on the schedule and their timeline, um, identifying when the remediation work will begin. We're hoping um, if the weather holds that we'll be able to start that process very shortly um, within the, the 2020 uh, calendar year. And um, Scranton Tomorrow in the city uh, have meetings on the upcoming calendar to work on the design and construction timeline and finally finalizing um, the design details and then moving into a bid process for construction. So um, we're really excited about that news. We are also working on um, our master plan for the downtown. And uh, we have contracted the services of Tom Riley and Associates, who is a um, local firm, planning firm. Um, we are taking into consideration various plans that have been prepared in the past, and um, many of those were not ac um, actually executed. So we mm -hmm. thought it was really important to um, take all of those plans, pull them together, uh, it has taken some time to go through the plans, really identify what the priorities are in each plan and what is feasible and what is um, we have we would have the ability as a community to put this forward as a document for additional funding and for an overall comprehensive plan for the downtown identifying um, areas that should be um, you know looked at. The plan also not only um, looks at um, the downtown assets, um, our weaknesses, our um, areas for investment and repurposing, but we're also taking into consideration the connectivity to the adjacent neighborhoods. And that's very important in looking at the downtown. How do we connect our neighborhoods, whether it's walking or biking or um, vehicle, you know, vehicle traffic, but looking at how we connect the downtown to our neighboring communities and to our, our neighborhoods is a very important piece of that plan. We're also involved, um, and I think this later this week, we will be um, present at a presentation on the pedestrian and bike study, which is the Lackawanna County and Luzerne County study. So we're taking into consideration all of those other plans and making sure that our partners are informed. So we will keep you posted as to the next steps once we have the plan a little bit more fine tuned. Um, our business development committee has been um, working diligently um, and especially during COVID, we have found that it is very important for us to not only plan for the businesses in, in putting together initiatives, but to more importantly, be listening to the businesses and what the business community is telling us that they need. So we're doing a few different things. Um, first and foremost, we are tracking any businesses within the downtown district, unfortunately, that may have closed due to the pandemic or other circumstances during the pandemic. We are also working with a number of businesses that have reached out that do need um, some extra help with sustainability. We're trying to match those individuals up with other community partners. So I think it's important to note that we are not looking to recreate the wheel. We're not looking to duplicate any services that other organizations do exceptionally well. We are looking to pull those partners to the table and make sure that we utilize, utilize the experts within our own community. So we are 
most definitely working with individuals that have some sustainability issues. Um, but what is really interesting to see is that we have some new businesses that have um, started during the COVID pandemic. So we are um, in the process of engaging a number of these new business owners to make sure that they are part of the downtown as a whole, whole and are, are participating in any programs that um, agencies like ours may, may have to offer them. A key component of that is maintaining our website. And we have a resource page, a COVID resource page that is um, pretty significant. It has all of the information that a small business owner um, or, or a resident would be looking for as far, far as governor's orders um, and um, opportunities for PPE, et cetera. So I would um, offer our website at scrantontomorrow.org as a resource if you are looking for, for detailed information. Um, we also are working on a campaign which is really all about economics. It's about reminding the community to support local and to um, really focus on your, our small business community. We kicked that off in the fall with our Scare Up Some Downtown Business where we had 30 participants um, designing scarecrows that really met the, um, you know, what their business represented. And it was just really a fun way to engage businesses and, and residents to remember to support local. Um, we have an entire holiday campaign um, structured. We will be kicking it off next week. It is called Light Up Downtown Scranton. It is an inspirational um, campaign and it is really focused on the new way of doing business. So um, I think that the, um, I, I think you will all really appreciate the, the campaign. Um, we have created a dining and shopping guide on our website. I won't go into much detail right now, but it is um, uh, really covering all of the ways that a business is operating right now. So it will show if they are offering curbside, if they're a restaurant, indoor dining, outdoor dining, um, Grubhub or um, Uber Eats, everything is right there. If you're a retailer, we will let you know if they will do a Zoom appointment, an in-person appointment, um, curbside delivery, personal shopping for the holidays. So it's really a campaign designed to meet the needs of the business as well as meet the needs of, of the customer and your client base. So um, from, from November 1st, well, actually November 2nd, through the end of December, we will run our holiday campaign. We are kicking our campaign off five weeks earlier than we normally do. And we're doing this because we understand that the holiday season is going to be a lot different this year than it has in the past. Uh, businesses are worried about it. Consumers are worried about it. So let's get a jump on it now and promote um, shop local, shop now. Um, and lastly, I wanted to um, give you an update on our Safe, Clean and Green and Design Committee activities. Our ambassador program continues to run strong, even though we're on limited staff and limited volunteers. I just wanted to give you a few um, numbers so um, you have an idea of what they are accomplishing even during COVID. Um, this quarter alone, the ambassadors, um, and I, at that point it was two ambassadors on the street, have swept over 300 blocks. They have removed over 1,000 pounds of garbage from public areas. Just today alone, uh, one of our workers cleaned debris and um, graffiti off of 27 light poles. That's in one day. Um, we are keeping the Mulberry Islands as we adopted them from PennDOT years ago. Uh, we normally did quarterly cleanups. We are keeping the Mulberry Islands on a monthly schedule. We think that's very, very important. Um, so the monthly schedule includes um, removal of debris, mulching, weeding, um, and, and cigarette butt removal. So that is happening on a monthly basis. I do wanna mention, that we have had recent issues of vandalism and graffiti taking place within the downtown business district. Um, this is something our ambassadors are addressing daily um, as they see it. Today, we had a number of um, parking kiosks 
that had been uh, graffitied and that happened within the last 24 hours because our guys are on the street every day and they are logging where they see graffiti and as soon as they see it, they are removing it. Um, we also have had some vandalism in the downtown planters and um, in, in other areas of the downtown. They are coordinating with the police department, with ABM regarding the kiosks, as well as DPW and licensing inspections and permits. So they have a really good close connection with the municipality. Um, we also have been working on some abandoned cars within the downtown district, as well as some furniture as individuals are moving out of apartment buildings or office spots. Um, there have been some issues of haulers not um, picking up furniture, so they have been addressing those issues and working with the appropriate city departments to make sure that that happens. Um, but uh, one other thing that our that committee is working on that I think is worth noting, um, it's something in the infancy stages is we are working very diligently on a public arts program that would include sculpture art as well as mural arts. Um, our team ambassador, Steve Ward, is working very closely with um, Rose Rand Randazzo, who was instrumental in the formation of Pittston's mural program. Rose is a, a, a very dedicated um, individual in the arts community. And so um, she is helping um, identify the program guidelines and timelines um, community partners. And so we will keep you posted. We are working and will be working with the HARB and city officials uh, in formulating that uh, formal arts program. So I know it was a pretty detailed um, uh, update for you, but I, I hope that it, it does show our commitment, um, not only to the downtown, but to the city as a whole. And um, I think it also, um, I, and I hope that it shows that we are committed to the mission of Scranton tomorrow in making sure that we help support our community and our, our um, municipality. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? I don't have any questions, but I have a couple of comments. First of all, Leslie, thank you very much for the for the presentation. I would also like to thank Joshua for his devoted service for Scranton tomorrow in our community, and congratulate Mr. Gil Martin. Um, I'd also like to uh, you know say great work with the food insecurity and the support of our restaurant community. And then you know just another point I'd like to make the Lackawanna College project. I'm very proud to say that some of the current students there were former students of mine, so. I'm very proud of them and their involvement in, in this initiative. Right, I forgot that, Mark. Thank you for mentioning that. It's a great initiative. Sure. Kyle, I had a couple of questions. Sure. Um, Leslie, uh, great, great work. Uh, Thank really you. Really impressive uh, presentation, and, and it's it's amazing how much you guys are involved in. Um, the pocket park, once that is, um, designed and constructed that will be maintained by the by the city so it will be a partnership it will be the city's responsibility because they are the owner of the physical property however our safe clean and green team is ready to make sure that they step up to the plate to help support the pocket park absolutely and do you guys um, anticipate that would be completed I mean it, there's so there's so many uncertainties right now but is, it, is the overall plan to have that completed in calendar year 2021? Yes, absolutely. Um, we have a, a meeting coming up later this week to talk about the timeline, um, the timeline also for um, the, how we would bid out the construction. We need to finalize the design um, pieces and um, obviously have comment on, on the design and then uh, put together and work with the municipality on how we um, make sure that we we bid that out and we're hoping to start in you know spring, spring summer of 2021 yes. and then uh Leslie, you you and was it riley associates that you indicated is is, is doing the downtown downtown design plan and master plan oh great well i know they were involved in the city of pittston's main street project along with Rose Randanzo. So I think that's a great team that you put together because I don't know if ever anybody else 
has been down to Main Street or Pittston, but they've done a fantastic job as far as restoring that um, that Main Street there with the murals and the light posts and the sidewalks. It looks fantastic. They have. They've done an amazing job. Um, the the economic impact of their improvements really came from them having a master plan. Um, so we feel it was very important to invest in a master plan to make sure that our investment is cohesive and that there's a plan that shows the areas for improvement. That's great. Thanks again, Leslie, for your service. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, it's partnership. It's the only way it all gets done. Um, I also want to add, I want to thank you for um, providing us with your update and I appreciate all the details that that you included on the different projects that Scranton Tomorrow is working on. Um, I was really happy to see the results of the Electric City Connection. Um, you know, I think it was great how the organization stepped up to really help uh, the community and then businesses as well uh, in like a in time of need. So um, keep up the, the good work. And then it's, it's also about the Pocket Park is moving along. I know uh, a lot of residents have been anticipating that and looking to see what's um, what's been happening with it. I know that you've run into some, uh, some uh, for right. sure. so hopefully it'll be smoother sailing from here on. We hope so. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, and I would just like to add, you know, you're doing a great job, I think, downtown. Um, and just if you would pass along to your uh, downtown ambassadors, I know this time of year, it's always, it always happens where, especially on, when you mentioned the Mulberry uh, Islands, mm -hmm. is where the political signs get put up. And mm -hmm. nothing bothers me more than when you see yard signs in right of ways. So if they could just keep a lookout on those and get them. Because I know that happened, you know, last few years too. Oh well, I'm glad you mentioned that actually, because um, we have been picking up signs, not only political signs, um, because we can't have political signs on public property, um, but there have been a lot of different signs cropping up in the the downtown planters as well, um, and along the tree line. Of, of the properties. So we have been um, removing those signs. So yes, thank you for mentioning that, but that is part of their job. Um, and I know some people aren't all that happy when we remove a sign, but there is a reason and it is on, on the books that there is there are ordinances about signage in the downtown. So that is one reason they are removing, removing them. So actually, thanks for reminding me about that. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no problem. Does anyone else have any questions for Leslie? No? All right, thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate Perfect. it. Great, thank you. Have thank a great you, night. Bye-bye. Good night. Okay, um, moving along. Lori, do you have anything for the good of the order? Uh, I do not. Thank you, Councilman Donio. Uh, just, um, I think I covered it in my email earlier today regarding the uh, motions that will be made following roll call. Yes. Thank you. Solicitor Hayes. Um, I guess the, as you all know, the big, the big news of the week was so far this week was the Commonwealth Court's decision with regard to the appeal on the Act 511 taxes. Um, I think I think I circulated a summary of that. If anyone has any questions. I'll be happy to answer your question, answer them. Um, the taxpayers, those eight ta taxpayers, technically they have the right to file a, a petition uh, for allowance of appeal to, to the Supreme Court that, that runs in 30 days. So it would be, um, I guess, November 25th, would it, it, they'd have to file that. But obviously it was, uh, it was, a, big, it was big news. Um, other than that, I think I'm working with, various members and getting their questions answered on on the health care plan that's been proposed uh, we'll work with work with you through this week to try to see if, uh, if there's any unanswered questions on that proposal and then I don't know if Councilman Don, or um, councilman Donnie you may want to remind uh, the viewers that today at five o'clock was the expiration for applying for mail-in vote uh, ballots so uh, there's you have to take another course of action if they want to vote. It's, uh, they can't request one. 
Um, that's, okay. kind of that's it. That's mainly it for me. Oh, also, I know uh, uh, Councilman Dr. Rothschild had raised some questions um, on the Birch Street uh, sewer project. If there's any additional specific questions, uh, I would be happy to uh, talk to the project manager from the Pennsylvania American Water who's overseeing that project to see if we can get some more definitive timelines for the completion. Because I know that's been a uh, major concern for residents in that area that, that, that have all spoken, have, who have spoken to all of you. Yeah, um, like I said in um, my email um, after from what you had sent us, um, I just, uh, I understand that it's a, it's a very involved big project and it's been taking a long time, but I want to know why it's been extended and what, what is holding it up. Um, it, you know, I, I don't think we've really gotten a clear response on that. Um, that was from my end. I don't know if the other council members uh, have like additional questions or concerns, but I felt like that was the, uh, the big question we had. And then, um, yeah, like you said, what the timeline is going to be for completion now so that we can make sure it's it's done before uh, the colder months and uh, so that people can start utilizing that street again. Right. What I, I was going to bring that up too. What does everyone think about maybe inviting the project manager in just to speak to that to a caucus? Yeah, I think it would be helpful. I don't yes, know if we have other people in off the top of my head. Um, it's availability to bring yeah, I think we could have Lori just check and see what our schedule in terms mm -hmm. of caucuses looks like, and then we'll uh, circle back and see if you know we have any days where maybe she would be available. Because like I, I had a conversation with Attorney Hayes today about that too, and. <clears throat> You know, we're all for infrastructure improvements. Um, you know, usually when they do a project of this scale, they come in and just give us a small presentation. So then, you know, when we're asked questions about it, then, you know, we have at least a starting point to give answers. Um, for example, they, you know, American Water came in and did the presentation to us earlier in the year about the, the main project, um, you know, that's quote, that I believe closed Mattis Street by, uh, general dynamics today and it's closing some streets in the hill section but at least then when when neighbors come in they or neighbors question us we have at least a starting point on what's going on well i could work with, i'll work with lori in uh, coordinating uh, if it's possible uh having miss coleman who's a project manager uh, come speak to us at a caucus uh, to answer these questions you know the questions that you guys have regarding this project Thank you. Um, so let's go around the room. Mark, do you have anything? No, not this time. Jess? No, I'm good, thank you. Tom? You know, this is something that kind of just popped into my mind as we were going here. And I, I wish uh, I said it when Leslie was still in the room. Um, last week we talked about um, getting the new, uh, applying for the grant for the new street signs. And um, I guess as she talked about that mural work there, I was thinking about those street signs and maybe there's a possibility we could do some kind of um, like a uh, uh, like a reclaimed project or something like that that's similar to a mural with our, all those street signs from around the city. Might be a, something to talk to her about with her arts, um, the arts program. Yeah, absolutely. Other than that, that's all I have. Um, Okay, just a couple things um, I had. Uh, in terms of the Willis Towers Watson, that's still on the table. Um, I, I had a good conversation with uh, the business administrator, Carl Dealey, uh, this afternoon regarding that. And he did open up the floor to you know anyone else that had questions about that. So I thought maybe we'd leave that on the table tonight. Anyone that has any additional questions could set up a time with him to uh, go over them and then hopefully be able to bring that back at our meeting next week. If anyone has any comments or anything on that. Sounds good to me. Councilman Gone, um, I, or, um, 
Donahue, I'd spoken with uh, the mayor this afternoon and she indicated that she would make uh, uh, Carl and anyone else on her team available to provide members of council with an overview of the process of how they, they came to the, the selection of Wills Towers. So uh, in the next three business days, if we want to, yes. uh, if you want to have a call with them, uh, I'll work with the, I'll work with the administration to set that up for you. So do, do we think that's the best way to, to go about that, getting a, what, a conference call? Something well, I, I, we, we only could do it, uh, we couldn't do it with more than two members because it'd be a violation of the Sunshine Act. But so I, I think that's, but, but the mayor said she, of course, would be, she'd make herself available if you wanted her to come to caucus next week. But maybe in the interim, we could try to flesh out whatever individual questions you have regarding the plan before before Monday. Okay. And there, there is a lot that goes into it. I mean, it's about 17, 18 million dollars of our budget. And I feel a lot, me personally, I felt a lot more comfortable with it after talking to Carl with about it for about 45 minutes this afternoon. So, you know, and he did open it up to anyone else who wanted to uh, reach out. Okay. Yeah, I mean, as long as Kevin thinks that's the that's the route to go to get that um, to discuss that before uh, before caucus, I'm all right with that. That's fine. Yeah, I would I would recommend uh, so that we would be in a position on Monday to at least take the issue up. And then uh, also on the uh, Center Street legislation, and I talked to. Uh, President Gaughan about this this morning, uh, try to table this because we have some additional questions regarding whether the county uh, reached out to some of the businesses in that area to see how you know doing what they planned on doing would be would affect their day to day operations and just make sure everyone's also on the same page. Um, does anyone have a problem with just keeping that on the table just to get some more information from the county for another week? I don't have any issue with that. So the resolution um, for the maintenance agreement, that's already on the table. This would just be moving the order or the ordinance in seventh order uh, to, to table it uh, until next week or, or whenever. Yeah. So if someone would make that motion or second. I'll make that motion. I like to hear, you know, everybody involved that it's going to be impacted. Um, so I would favor that. All right. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I don't think there's like, a, you know, major urgency to doing this um, right away. So, so, you know, to ask a few more questions is, is fine. Yeah. So that's 7A. Uh, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Does anyone have anything else? Um, I just, excuse me, uh, Councilman Donahue, I just want to clarify with Kevin. Um, so the motion to table 7A will be, be when we're on the piece. There'll need to be a motion. Once it's read, you'll need to make a motion to table at that point. That has to be a second. Correct? Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. So then for purposes of our guide for this evening, motion number four will not occur and motion number five will not occur because they will remain tabled, correct? We're not bringing them back. Correct. Resolution 79 and 80 will remain tabled. So motion number four and number five That's will correct. not occur. That's okay, correct. very good. And then once the piece is read, 7A is read, um, we'll make a motion to table during the meeting correct okay very good thank you thanks Lori. thank you anything anyone have anything else for the good of the order okay we'll take a break for five minutes and come back for the start of our meeting at 6 30. thank you i'd like to call this Scranton City Council meeting to order. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag 
of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with unity and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world, and also for those who passed away in our community. And on the second anniversary of the Tree of Life Synagogue tragedy, I ask that you keep the victims and their families in your thoughts this evening. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster. Present. Mr. McAndrew. Present. Dr. Rothschild. Here. Mr. Donahue. Here. Mr. Gaughan. Okay, motion number one. I would like to make a motion to appoint Councilman Donahue as temporary chair. Oh, sorry, it's muted. Um, motion number one. I would like to make a motion to appoint Councilman Donahue as temporary chair for the Committee on Rules. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, yes. motion number two. I would like to make a motion to appoint Councilman Schuster as temporary chair for the Committee on Public Works. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Um, I would like to make a motion to take from the table the following three ordinances. File of the Council number 23, 2020, file of the Council number 26, 2020, and file of the Council number 27, 2020. Second. On the question. These pieces are being taken from the table and placed in seventh order for a final vote. These pieces had been tabled in order to comply with the 30 day public comment period as required by HUD. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A agenda for the non uniform municipal pension board meeting held October 21, 2020. 3B, minutes of the non-uniform municipal pension board meeting held September 16, 2020. 3C, correspondence received from OECD executive director dated October 20, 2020 regarding fiscal year 2020 CDBG SLHDA project update. 3D, correspondence received from Department of Human Resources dated October 16, 2020 regarding internal audit. 3E, correspondence received from the city's administration dated October 14, 2020, regarding decision to reject two proposals received by the city. 3F, correspondence received from OECD Executive Director dated October 19, 2020, regarding COVID-19 reimbursements through Lackawanna County CARES Act funding. 3G, correspondence received from OECD Executive Director dated October 19, 2020, regarding response to council questions on demolition process map. 3H, correspondence received from Department of Human Resources, dated October 19, 2020, regarding PA state and local internship program overview. 3I, breakdown of Novembrino Park project costs, received October 20, 2020. 3J, correspondence received from business administrator, dated October 22, 2020, regarding Willis Towers Watson disclosure as requested by council. 3K correspondence received from OECD executive director dated October 23, 2020, regarding COVID-19 reimbursement through Lackawanna County CARES Act funding. 
3L correspondence received from Kohansky Company PC dated October 21, 2020 regarding City of Scranton audit. Are there any comments on any of the third, third order items? If uh, not, received and filed. Uh, Mr. Donahue, I, I'd like to request a copy. Um, I, I don't have an original copy of the um, Nova Marino Park project, the plan and the budget. Can I request a copy of that at this moment? Yeah, I think that's that's just going to be after be a request of everything to date because I don't think there's one specific uh, file on it because I think in the beginning it was sort of piecemealed. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll look in that a little deeper then. Received and filed. Do any council members have any announcements at this time? At this time? You're muted, Mark. I don't know what's happening here, I'm sorry. Um, I would like to provide an updated trunk or treat events uh, status. So in Westside, trick or treat uh, or trunk or treat will be on the 500 block of North Main Avenue. It'll be Saturday, October 31st uh, from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Also, there will be one at the Hilton Conference Center, 100 Adams Avenue, Scranton, PA. This will be Saturday, October 31st, uh, 6 to 8 p.m. It's a drive-through. Uh, the Scram Police Department giveaways were donated and will be handed out by the Hilton staff. And then the East Scranton Little League, a 901 Richter Avenue has been changed. So it was, it was October 30th, but now um, it will be Sunday, November 1st from 3 to 5 p.m. Um, that is all I have. Okay, I have a, I have a couple. Uh, next week, council will reschedule their regular meeting of Tuesday, November 3rd to Monday, November 2nd at 6.30 p.m. due to election day. City Hall will be closed Tuesday, November 3rd for the, for the election day holiday. DPW will also be off on Tuesday. Uh, refuse and blue recycling will be one day behind starting on Wednesday of next week. Uh, I also want to remind you about the City of Scranton 2020 fall leaf pickup and recycling program. Uh, leaves must be placed in bio biodegradable brown paper bags. These bags are available for pickup at the DPW complex located at 101 Poplar Street and at the Weston Field House located at 982 Providence Road. Uh, all collections will be from the curbside of streets and avenues. Uh, no collections will be in courts or alleys. No loose piles, no plastic bags, uh, no household trash in leaf bags. Uh, the fall leaf pickups will be, the remaining fall leaf pickups will be this week uh, following cardboard pickup, the week of November 9th following paper pickup, the week of November 24th following cardboard, and the week of December 7th following paper. Um, also, OECD's executive director asked that an announcement be made regarding the following. Effective Wednesday, October 21st, 2020, Applications will be available for the City of Scranton's Community Development Block Grant Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and the Emergency Solutions Grant administered by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Project activities must be consistent with the needs and objectives identified in the City of Scranton's five-year consolidated plan, principally for extremely low, low, and moderate income families. Eligible applicants must be incorporated for profit, nonprofit, or public organizations or businesses able to undertake their approved activity within the boundaries of the city of Scranton. Applications are available online at Scranton Works at www.scrantonworks.org and must be submitted electronically no later than 5 p.m. on Friday, November 20th. Uh, public comment on the C C CDBG home ESG programs will be accepted at the November 10th, 2020 council meeting scheduled at 6.30 p.m. To submit comment, email lreed at scrantonpa.gov or by U.S. mail at Scranton Municipal Building 340 North Washington Ave, Scranton, PA 18503, attention city clerk's office, no later than 3 p.m., on November 10th, 2020. Public comment will also be received until November 20th, 2020 at www.scrantonworks.org or by emailing scranton311 at scrantonpa.gov. Um, and as we 
as I mentioned before, election day is next Tuesday. I would like to just urge anyone who applied for a mail-in ballot, received their mail-in ballot, but has yet to put it in the mail to please hand deliver that ballot. If you wanna make sure that, that it's counted, there is a lot of uh, uncertainty into when ballots will be accepted. So to guarantee that your vote will be counted, I urge you to drop it off at the Lackawanna County Government Center on Wyoming Avenue. And or, also if- or, or one of the drop boxes, right? Yes, I yeah. believe the drop, spot, drop boxes are only opened until Friday at 5 p.m. Is that correct? Where the, the one at the county building is Tuesday? I, I wasn't aware of that, but I'll, I'll find out by the end of the meeting. I'll let you okay. know. And also, uh, you know, if, if you mailed in your ballot, you believe that you might have erred in how you filled it out or you sent in a naked ballot, meaning you didn't put it in the privacy envelope. You, if there's any doubt in your mind, you could always show up at your polling place on election day and request a provisional ballot. Um, okay, fourth order, citizens participation. Uh, the following residents have submitted public comment for tonight's meeting. Marie Schumacher, Norma Jeffries, Faye Franis, and Dave Jobson. Could I have a motion? To accept public comment. Make a motion to accept public comment. Second. There's been a motion to accept public comment. Mrs. Reed, please read the comment. Thank you, Councilman Donahue. Um, the first submission was from Marie Schumacher as follows. The city's recycling color-coded pickup schedule shows the commingled bin is for plastic bottles and jars. However, I believe I heard Mr. Donahue say that only plastic with the numbers one, two, and four in the triangle were acceptable. If I heard correctly, please advise when the city will correct the information we received. Reading the third order items tells me this body needs to start paying more attention to what they have authorized. Though the current capital budget is not available online that I could find, it appears council has allowed the expense for the Novembrino Splash Park to get out of control. Of more importance is not following up on the auditor's report to see whether or not the administration was providing the needed information. And while I'm on that topic, why are we still paying Rainy and Rainy? It was my understanding they were brought in to train BA personnel and when that had been accomplished, they would be gone. Currently, 64% of the city's property owners pay for 100% of the operating budget. City councils have placated the paying property owners by including addressing the 36% and growing nonprofits who are exempt from paying property tax, but council has done nothing to test the eligibility for this perk. Last week, city, excuse me, last week council brought the capital budget back for passage, stating all the questions have been answered. I know mine weren't answered, and the communication you said you'd received from DPW was not in third order for all to see. Taxpayers, at least this one, were told the Harrison Avenue Bridge was a deterrent to increased efficiency of the fire department. When will a fire department efficiency study be performed now that the Harrison Avenue bridge has been replaced? The second submission is from Mrs. Norma Jeffries as follows. Um, regarding NDC presentation in 10-20-2020 parking at kiosk system. It was with great anticipation that I waited for the NDC update during the recent city council caucus. I was hoping against all hope that they would have discussed some of the future plans that would assist the kiosk parkers in Scranton that they hear us when we have concerns. Some of my friends and acquaintance relay their experiences with receiving parking tickets because the machines are malfunctioning. It then becomes a proof it situation for the resident. It becomes our task to contact ABM to prove that the kiosk was malfunctioning at the time I tried to use it. It seems to me 
that with the technology of being able to scan our license plate for a violation, the system should be able to scan the parking meters to ensure that they are always in tip top condition. I am sure that each kiosk has a identifying number. It seems that a malfunctioning meter should be reported to ABM via the system rather than being reported by John Q public. This seems to be a great upgrade to the system and relieve so much frustration for the cities for the citizens of Scranton. As Dr. Rothschild mentioned last week, she too has experienced the malfunctioning of a kiosk. It was very noticeable to me that the presenter David Trevisani remarked that he would check with ABM for any malfunctioning kiosk information. However, my concerns from my letter of September 15, 2020, as far as I can see, have not been addressed. I am sure that it is not just Dr. Rothschild and me experiencing these issues. All of us who use the kiosk will eventually experience one of these situations. When I leave the house and head downtown, I leave with sufficient quarters and credit card in hand because I never know which I will need. That is kind of sad. I am also attaching my letter to council regarding my concerns with NDC ABM. The third submission is from Ms. Faye Franis as follows. <clears throat> council, I saw where the seven judges ruled in the city's favor and now there is no cap on how high you can tax the people of Scranton on the LST tax. <clears throat> Pardon me. Gee, I really thought when we, the people, voted for our council members, we believed they were elected to represent us, the taxpayers, not the administration. I want every one of you to publicly say why you believe it is the right thing to do, to tax the city residents as much as the administration wants so high people may lose their homes. Remember, I do not want to hear how, if you don't do this, the city has no other way to recoup the 50 million they overcharged the taxpayers to begin with. That is the mayor's problem, not yours. I repeat, this city overcharged the taxpayers illegally $50 million, more than they were allowed to, and you, the city council members, are not fighting to get that 50 million back to the people who this city overcharged. You instead are on the side of the administration who are thrilled they won this lawsuit to keep raising the city's LST tax on residents for millions more. Go ahead, Councilman Gawhan, McAndrew, Donahue, Schuster, and Councilwoman Rothschild. Let's hear how you feel this is fair, how the Scranton taxpayers won't be getting their money back, and now you want to keep overtaxing them millions again. Then end by saying, and by the way, we represent you. No, you do not. You are liars. You take care of the mayor and her administration, not the people. We are tired of your excuses, one being the city can't function if you didn't win this lawsuit. Too bad. It's okay, though, that people don't have a clue how they will be able to pay these bills. There is nothing you can say that will justify abusing the residents of this city. Finally, and most important, I definitely believe this is illegal to continue to have no limit on the LST tax. No cap at all. Other municipalities all have a cap on how much you can charge. Where is equality here? You may have had these judges rule in your favor. That means nothing if this is truly illegal. You count on people not suing you to continue to do what you want. Maybe someone out there will indeed challenge the illegality of this. This city has to be stopped by having judges rule in their favor to the detriment of the people of Scranton over and over. The fourth submission is from Mr. Dave Dobson as follows. Good luck trying to make it meet on the budget for 2021. I would like to address past comments by other speakers back in March. Comments were made about the mayor's and certain council members' attendance to a Planned Parenthood rally. My opinion is that the USA should have introduced family planning globally 50 years ago to all willing to participate. Ecologically, this planet cannot support more than 2 billion people on a Western standard of living without serious environmental, excuse me, environment degradation. Many of these same comment, commentators express opposition to social programs and spending to su sustain U.S. citizens in times of need. I have always supported free choice and personal responsibility. People should not be required to put up with intrusion into their personal lives by government at the behest of other, others' religious fervor. 
These issues have no place in a constitutional democracy. Regressive legislation, disenfranchisement, incarceration, and ethnic cleansing are often the final result. Over the years, I have seen these same individuals comment on many issues that are not their legitimate concern. The 14th and 15th Amendment to the Bill of Rights have ensured free choice in matters of social nature. We need not return to 1859. I have had my own issues with these people as they have on their hopeless bids for public office have portrayed me as on drugs. And the fact is that I have seven different prescriptions to keep me alive. My suggestion is they should accept the will of the voter and mind their own business. In Colorado, the state instituted broad avail of birth control and eliminated 55% of all unplanned pregnancies and 65% of abortions. Excuse me if life taught me at 66 years that a half a loaf is better than none. It appears that some people love their imaginary reality, but no good will prevail. And that concludes the public participation. Uh, on the question. Um, yes, on the question. I just want to respond to uh, Mrs. Jeffrey's comments uh, regarding the parking and ABM because we did re receive um, correspondence. Uh, I'm assuming that's going to be included. I would ask that be included in um, uh, third order next week. Um, but it, it seems that they're saying that there are um, on average three kiosks per day that, um, that are not working properly and they have a full-time technician that services them. Uh, and out of the amount of kiosks that they have, I think that's just 1.6% um, per day uh, that require service. Uh, I think uh, maybe some of us have been the unlucky ones to uh, just happen to come upon those kiosks that day. Um, but at least we did receive some numbers and a little bit more insight on, um, on how often those repairs are being needed. I'm not sure if that is um, still like, acceptable, that, that amount of um, kiosk being in, in disrepair. Um, you know, I don't really have anything to compare it to, uh, but I um, just wanted to provide her with that information that we've received. Thank you. Uh, just to answer uh, a couple of uh, Ms. Schumacher's questions, um, when I said that you know only one, two, and four of the plastics were acceptable, that doesn't mean that glasses and jars weren't acceptable. Uh, one, two, and four are the only plastics that are accepted, along with uh, jars and cans. Um, and when the schedule first came out, you know. It wasn't until July that we got from the uh, recycling center which plastics they would accept moving forward. And that schedule was put out in uh, February, I believe. So hopefully we could have that information go out on a schedule for next year. Um, and then on, uh, on our question about uh, the capital budget and the DPW questions not being in third order. Uh, Councilman President Gaughan uh, read those answers into the record last week. So I would urge uh, Ms. Schumacher to read the minutes from last week to uh, get those answers. Uh, it wasn't in third order, but Councilman Gaughan did read them into the record. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, there was two things I wanted to comment on. Um, <clears throat> first off, um, Mr. Hayes, um, how do we go about testing the eligibility of nonprofits? Do you know that offhand or can we begin to look into that? You're muted. You're uh, Councilman um, Schuster, the nonprofits are regulated by the Pennsylvania Department of State in order to be eligible to be designated as a, they're the, by the Pennsylvania Department of State as well as the, the IRS and the Department of Revenue. So I don't know that we as a uh, municipality have the ability to challenge their designation as a 501c3 or other um, designation. Kev, Kev, I think what Tom and, and also Ms. Schumacher are referring to are, are a HUB test. Okay. Or a HUP test, H-U-P. Okay. Uh, 
where you know you send out and you make and you make the nonprofits uh, justify their nonprofit. You know, you send out a letter making them justify their nonprofit status. Okay, I'd have to. I'll look into it, Tom. I don't know the offhand the specifics of how we do that, but I can look into it and report back next week on that. Yeah, thank you very much. I know it's a conversation I've I've had a couple times, but um, maybe we get started on that. And then the second thing is um, with the audit. Um, it was our, the correspondence was put into third order, third order tonight. Um, am I to understand that as of September 3rd, the auditors have not received any other information from the administration? It's on the first page. So far. I'm told with, with that time is is that there there's a meeting with the auditors scheduled for this week, um, so maybe we could follow up on that towards the end of the week to see if you know that schedule in terms of the mid December one they they gave to us has it has moved up or is yeah so I mean that. I'm Sorry, Lauren. I had the same questions, but it was my, it's my understanding that they're having a meeting this week with the auditors, the administration. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it looks like in that they say no information. With they're just saying things to consider the pandemic, um, OECD being up to until the first. So I'm, I, I'm fully understanding that that correspondence. That's they are giving some of those um, reasons for that, correct? Yes, and that's you know that's sort of the same thing that we got. With our, you know, questions from last year. Yeah. And if I may add, Councilman Donahue and Schuster, I, I believe within that correspondence, um, Kohansky did note that they would be providing weekly updates from here on out. Right. Yes, I did see that. Thank you. Is that it? Anyone else have anything? Councilman Donahue, um, uh, Mrs. or Ms. Schumacher had requested the total number of um, pending or outstanding lawsuits which the city is currently involved in or defending. Uh, I reached out to the law department and we're trying to compile that information uh, for her. Okay. And then we'll send the rest of the questions along to uh, the administration. Uh, all those in favor? of accepting public comments signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Schuster, do you have any motions or comments at this time? No, none at this time. I already spoke on those. Mr. McAndrew? Yes, I do. So, I mean, for months I've been getting bombarded um, with with calls about illegal garage services throughout the city. All right. Um, one in particular, um, I received another uh, correspondence today, and th this one, this one, I first brought forward in May. Okay, so um, and it's it's on three twenty four Crown Avenue. All right, it's a garage. It's illegally operating since May. Um, I, I know that they went through the process where, you know, the lips department shows up. Um, and I know my understanding is they've been cited. I mean, th of course, they received the original zoning violation letter that says, you know what, we're not going to correspond with you anymore after 10 days, uh, some formal action will take place. So uh, uh, my understanding is they received a few citations. So how many is, 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 is the, too many or, or what happens? Um, I, I know there was a revision of the lifts department that, that, that occurred, an internal um, audit. I, I'd, I'd like to know, um, first of all, what the status of, of this, pro this illegal garage is. If Mrs. Reed, if, if you could please uh, send a request to me. And I know I'm saying a bunch of stuff, so Mrs. Reed, I'll email the actual request tomorrow, okay? Um, and secondly, I mean, there's another one. It's, it's at the rear of 1149 Sloan Street, right? So. And I've been inquiring about this one. So here's another one where, okay, so the police department showed up, um, the list lifts department showed up. They also received the zoning violation letter that states, you know, after 10 days, uh, formal action will probably occur. But then part of that letter 
says that they have the opportunity to appeal this, the people that are running this illegal garage, which doesn't make sense. So, so they have until this other issue with the garage, they have until November 8th to appeal this, to appeal the illegal services that they're providing. So I, I'm, having my, I'm having trouble wrapping my head around this whole process. Is this the process that's going to continue to happen even after um, the revision of the lips department? And if this is policy, I, I'm just not understanding it because this isn't fair to all the other garages in the city that do it, on, uh, do it legally and provide the services. So I need some type of... of uh, you know, explanation, feedback with regard to the process in general, and, and to see, you know, if this is the old process, is this the new process, or was this even looked at? Because this, these occurrences are happening throughout the city. I, I'm just naming two as of right now, but I know it, it, it's, it's more than two, and it continues. And I know that, you know, for a while they'll stop, and then a week or two later, they're back at it. And the one at the rear of 1149 is causing huge safety issues with regards to parking all over the place on the sidewalks. And this is a side street, actually a Slager, where, you know, trucks can't get through. The UPS delivery can't get through. I mean, there's kids that, that live in that neighborhood. So it's, it's a huge safety issue. I just, ha I just need a better explanation as to why that these illegal garages get all these 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 steps before they're shut down. And then the ones that, that went through that process, the one in Crown Avenue, 324 Crown Avenue, since May, the, start, the process started in May, and they're still operating illegally. I, I just, I, I'm having a huge problem understanding this. So, um, I, you know, like I said, uh, Mrs. Reed, I'll, I, will, I will email you my request, but uh, I need some answers. The residents that live near these, uh, these illegal operations are, are dying for, for resolve, and it just doesn't seem to be happening. Um, that is all I have. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Rothschild, any motions or comments? Uh, no, none at this time. Thank you. Uh, just to expand quickly on what uh, Councilman McAndrew brought up, you know, like this is an issue all, all over the city, and, and really it's not just in garage, it's garages, it's in alleys, it's on streets where, you know, a car will be up on jacks for, you know, a week on a city street. So uh, I would just like that included too, of trying to figure out a policy moving in, especially once we get into next summer um, for how we, how we're going to deal with those. Uh, you know, if they're actually in a garage, they could actually be doing that stuff throughout the winter, but the stuff on the street in the alleys, uh, that's something that we're going to have to really look at you know, going into next, you know, before going into next summer too. You know, and thank you, uh, Councilman Donahue. I also forgot to say that some of these cars are being painted in the middle of a street at these illegal garages, which is, I can't even understand it. So um, thanks for, uh, and, and, and it's rampant. And that's all I have for tonight too. 5B for introduction and ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to donate an obsolete and inactive fire engine to Johnson College for use. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor for, of introduction signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C for introduction, a resolution, appointment of Mary Jo Sheridan, 1213 Schlager Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to serve as a member of the Land Bank, effective September 8, 2020. Ms. Sheridan is being appointed to fulfill the unexpired term of Mr. Wayne Beck, which will expire on February 9, 2024. At this time, so I'll moved. entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into his proper committee. So um, moved. Was there a second? Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> the ayes have it and so moved. 
5D for introduction of resolution. Reappointment of Anthony Santoli, 1041 Prescott Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18510, as a member of the Shade Tree Commission for an additional five-year term, effective October 29, 2020. Mr. Santoli's current term is scheduled to expire on October 29, 2020, and new term will expire on October 29, 2025. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced to its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? You guys have it and so moved. 5E for introduction of resolution, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials for the city of Scranton to execute and enter into an agreement with Northeastern Pennsylvania Alliance, 1151 Oak Street, Pittston, Pennsylvania, 18640-3726, to provide the City of Scranton and OECD with underwriting services and support for their various loan and grant programs. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. Second. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5F for introduction of resolution authorizing the coordinator of Emergency Management, Al Lucas, who act as an agent for the City of Scranton for emergency and disaster relief pursuant to the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act and authorizing the city officials to execute the designation of agent and the Pima Public Disaster Assistance Application and Agreement for financial assistance. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. <clears throat> All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order. 7A for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, file of the Council Number 31, 2020, authorizing the City of Scranton to approve the designation of the 300 block of Center Street as a one-way street from Penn Avenue towards Wyoming Avenue with the Scranton Police Department to enforce the designations as reflected in the attached drawing, C-4, Center Street Parking. I would like to make a motion to table 7A uh, per our discussion in caucus. Second. There's been a motion and a second to ta table item 7A. Any question? All those in favor of tabling item 7A signify by saying aye. Aye. Nay. They're opposed? The ayes have it and item 7A has been tabled. 7B for consideration of the Committee on Public Works for Adoption, Resolution Number 82, 2020, ceremoniously, ceremoniously, excuse me, dedicating a portion of Cobb Avenue adjacent to the Engine 10 Fire Station located on East Mountain Road in honor of Charles J. Tanders Jr. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As a temporary chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of 7B. Second. On the question? On the question, I just, um, uh, very happy to honor this portion of the road to Mr. Tanzitz. I second that. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes.
I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for Adoption, Resolution number 83, 2020, accepting $250 donation from Ricardo's Market Incorporated, presented to the City of Scranton Police Canine Unit. What is the recommendation for the chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of 7C. Second. On the question? Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I'd like to thank the Ricardo, uh, the Ricardos and their family for their very nice uh, donation for the K-9 unit. I agree. Uh, thank you for the generous donation. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for Adoption. Resolution number 84, 2020, ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development for a multimodal transportation fund grant in the amount of $306,000 to be utilized to implement phase two of the street sign project for the purchase and installation of 2,036 street signs. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As a temporary chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of 7D. Second. On the question? On the question, after the meeting tonight, I'll send, um, Mrs. Collins, an email with that um, that idea. I was thinking of for that uh, reclamation project. Maybe we can get some kind of nice artwork or some type of piece made from those city street signs, if it's a possibility. Okay. Uh, just on the question, um, you know, it feels like a decade ago when Miss Jeffries first came in and brought up the street signs, but I think it was only two years ago. So this is, I mean, but this is a long time coming. Uh, and not only you know for aesthetic value, but also for public safety to make sure first responders are turning down you know the right streets. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster. Yes. Mr. McAndrew. Yes. Dr. Rothschild. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Donahue. Yes. I, hear, I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E previously tabled for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, file of the Council number 23, 2020, amending file of the Council number 4, 2020, entitled authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the City of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and Emergency Solutions Grants Program for the five-year consolidated plan, analysis of impediments to fair housing choice, and annual action plan for the period beginning January 1, 2020, by amending the 2020 action plan by utilizing $80,000 under CDBG. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7E. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. I hereby declare item 7E legally and lawfully adopted. 7F previously tabled for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, file of the Council number 26, 2020, amending file of the Council number 27, 2018, entitled an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs 
to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and Emergency Solutions Grants Program for the period beginning January 1, 2019, by amending the 2019 action plan by utilizing $40,000 under the Home Investment Partnership Program for Homeowner Housing Rehabilitation Program. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7F. Second. I have a question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. I hereby declare item 7F legally and lawfully adopted. 7G previously tabled for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, file of the Council number 27, 2020, amending file of the Council number 20, 2018, entitled an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and Emergency Solutions Grants Program for the period beginning January 1, 2018, by amending the 2018 action plan by utilizing $75,000 under the Emergency Repair, Housing Rehabilitation, Home Investment Partnership Program for Homeowner Housing Rehabilitation Program. What is the recommendation for the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7G. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue. Yes. I hereby declare item 7G legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>